I encounter a lot of injustice in Cuba uh, on their different political, uh, uh, can we call it regimes? They're not regimes, I don't know what, they are tyrannies. Because for my misfortune, uh, and that's the, the only regret I have about being a Cuban, is that I grew up, my, uh, my young years were, were under Machado, my middle years were under Batista, and my old years are under Castro. So uh, injustice was all over the place. artists that have followed blindly, uh, you know, movements that didn't, they were not creating, but following, only following. But others, no, I mean, they were very advanced and breaking through of what was happening even in the world as was Torres Garcia, and it was a Fontana, for example, from Argentina, and probably like even Carmen Herrera also. I mean, Carmen Herrera was born in 1912, and uh, she was doing uh, geometrical abstraction and minimalism, uh, when minimalism became popular in the 60s. So we are talking of people that we are definitely working within their times. Everybody paints. I think practically every child paints. And if you have a very nice family, they say you're a little genius and you're going to be a, a, a tiny Rembrandt or whatever. But that's not true. Uh, it's a choice. Like you might choose becoming a priest or a, or a religious person. And it's sometimes a, a choice that you don't uh, make consciously. I remember I, w I was always painting and, it, it, uh, and sculpting and painting and interested in uh, the visual arts. And I remember one day I was walking in Paris and I said to myself, I'm an artist. And, and I was frightened. I mean, it, the, the commitment at that moment, it was like saying, I'm going to go into a monastery for life. And it, it's, a, it's a very steep thing. Well. Uh, after I got over that uh, first uh, shock, I realized you know, I had a lot of wonderful uh, sides. I have never regretted being an artist. We should l see her in terms of art in general, because Carmen Arena, though born in Cuba and, uh, and uh, having lived there, is such an international figure. Growing up during the Machado time was very difficult. To get an education, a decent education, a continuous education was impossible. It was, the university was open, it was closed, it was open, the high schools, I mean, the whole thing. I don't know how I managed to go through high school and, uh, and how I got to the university under those conditions, but I, I was aiming at being an architect. And uh, uh, then, uh, I was there for two years and met my husband, who's American, and I came to the United States and decided that um, maybe I should be a sculptress. I was doing some sculpting in Cuba, and uh, I dropped architecture completely and went into the arts. My husband, Jesse Lowenthal, uh, went to Cuba in 1937, and we met, and uh, I was, very much taken by him right away because of his great interest uh, and knowledge in all the arts and letters very especially, but uh, in the arts. And uh, uh, he made all my young friends who were artists at that time. And uh, then when we moved to the United States, he really introduced me to very many important people in the, in the art world. 
and uh, we always lived a, a, a life of, of the intellect, full of music, full of, of, of theater, full, full of wonderful things, all the things that make life uh, worthwhile living. And he provided all that. He provided the excitement and he provided the, uh, the stimulus uh, and the understanding and the support that he gave me <laughs> all these years, emotional support. Because it's not easy sometimes to be an artist. Although I would not change it. She lived and studied in Paris, in New York. She basically settled here, as you know. Was part of the uh, Barnett Newman circle. Barnett Newman uh, was a friend of my husband's. They went to school together. Uh, at the time I met Barney, he wasn't uh, working very much as a painter. He was really thinking about painting, and it was a fascinating thing to get together with him and have dinner and have him talk. I, in those days, I didn't talk as much as I talk today. I listened, and I listened to him, who was a fascinating man, a very intelligent man. And in, this, in that sense, he did uh, uh, influence me. Not that I consider that my painting has any, any connection with his uh, visually, but uh, intellectually, yes. New York City uh, frightened me a little bit, after all. Remember, Cuba was a very was sort of slow-paced, uh, elegant city, and I was thrown in, into this uh, new world completely. But the thing that disappointed me in New York was that I was looking for very interesting modern art, and I didn't find it. Uh, the painters that uh, were active then, I hated their work. The only two painters that I thought really were great were uh, George O'Keefe and uh, uh, Stuart Davis. Those were my favorites, and I went to see his work as uh, any opportunity, of course. Carmen Herrera is interesting because she has produced her entire body of work uh, in the United States. Uh, but I think she connects with artists like uh, maybe Amelia in her sense of color and her move towards abstraction. I don't feel that, I don't feel that my work is related uh, intimately with the work of Amelia Pelais, but I, I feel that the spirit uh, might be the same. I mean, Amelia to, took risks as a painter and I took risks as, as a painter. In that sense, I guess we are very much uh, alike, but, but not uh, in a plastic way, not in a visual way. She said somewhere, actually, that she was interested uh, uh, in Amelia Pelais, uh, strangely enough, because Amelia, of course, is a very Baroque artist, but, but certainly she was a, ma a magnificent colorist, and she did have a very, very good uh, a sense of color, having been trained to a great extent by Alexandra Exter, the Russian constructivist. So there's a kind of genealogy of women artists there that is, uh, has been completely overlooked in terms of, uh, of the debt of one to the other. My work in the 40s was searching for a way uh, that I didn't realize what it was till I went to Paris. And then I began painting. Really, my painting career began in Paris, I must say. Oh, I went to school here. I went to the Art Students League. I studied uh, uh, privately with Bridger, who was a very good uh, teacher, an excellent teacher. But I was holding on to representational things and going back and forth. It was a search. Paris in the 40s, uh, the late 40s, was absolutely glorious. There were very few cars. Hard to believe today. So you have this city to yourself, and, and it's probably the, the most beautiful city in the world. And of course, when one is young and one is in Paris, uh, in those conditions, it, it was just marvelous, really marvelous.